Yo, 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 what's up, everyone? Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? When was the last time? <laughs> I didn't let you guys finish the video. Shout out to everyone who, who tried to watch the, the video essay. Um... <laughs> yeah, I had a video. I had that one ready already. I uploaded as many last minute uh, pictures to that video as I could. How's everyone doing, man? When was the last time the fan base was this hyped, man? Yeah, I dropped a video too, right when, uh, well, right at, right at, was supposed to be the end of Dynamite, but uh, there was an overrun. <laughs> let me watch your video you guys if you guys have um a tv or a phone well depending on where you're at right <laughs> make sure you watch the video make sure you watch the stream i appreciate you guys man there's a lot to talk about dude mercedes monet is all elite dude i don't think i've seen i was trying to think about it man do i play ultimate team no not right now but i barely got the game today actually so Guys, um, I was I was trying to I was trying to think about it. Is that the best debut that a that a women's wrestler has ever had? At least here in the states, it's got to be right. It's got to be. It, it was like the way she was presented was like, well, she essentially got the CM Punk treatment, and the energy in the arena was crazy. The theme, dude. I was one of the people who said. They should keep the New Japan theme, but nah, but nah, like this one, the one that AEW gave her is incredible, man. The CEO chance, it was, I, I can't uh, praise Mikey Ruckus and AEW music enough, man. They get down with their entrance themes. Oz and Glorious, thanks, man. WTF Trank, I was just watching your video and your stream interrupted me. <laughs> yeah, I warned you guys, man. Uh, Will Ospreay's promo has me even more hyped than I was in 2021. Dude. It is so insane, right? That Osprey promo. Osprey's promo. Kazuchika Okada, like, being presented well on weekly TV. Like, Mercedes Monet coming in and, and feeling, like, legit a huge star. Like, um, Sting's retirement just happened. Jay White is getting back on track. Um, there's so much to get into, man. I, I don't even know where to start. Like, how, how Will Osprey said. Restore the feeling. I am the feeling, bruv. <laughs> the bruv chance and everything like bro this is this is an energy that has not been seen in aw in a long time man and i noticed that uh dynasty tickets are are flying off the shelf they're headed for a for a sellout too shinku thanks man i appreciate it for the the late birthday wishes whether they're late or early doesn't matter i appreciate the the love <laughs> But, um, dude, I don't know. I, like, so <laughs> what do you guys want me to start with? Obviously, Mercedes Monet's uh, debut is the big one, right? Like I said, I thought the, the new entrance team she had was, was great. Um, the energy and the, and the crowd was, was incredible. She was treated like the star that she was. Um, I like how she was also in the beginning of the show and the end. Like they gave her like the you know the first dance treatment. She cut the, she cut a, a a good pro. I like the promo. I know some people are gonna be harsh, but no, I thought the promo was good. Um, and then, yeah, man, she she just felt like a big deal. And then when she crossed paths with Riho before the main event backstage, that was pretty sick. I was like, man, those are like two of of the best women's wrestlers in the world. You know, just casually meeting for the first time on camera. That was sick. And then um, her coming out to help uh, Willow um, against Julia and Sky Blue was a nice little uh, full circle moment. Because, yeah, I'm pretty sure we all know she got injured during the Willow match. So, yeah, man. Oz and Glorious' Switchblade. Uh, greater, greater than sign. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> Thanks, Oz. Um, dude, oh my goodness. Dynasty's going to be... <laughs> I called Revolution AEW's masterpiece, but I really think that Dynasty is going to be like <laughs> even better, bro. How is that even possible? How is that possible, man? I, oh my goodness. Can you tell I'm hyped, guys? 
when's the last time I sounded this this hyped about um AEW? When's the last time we we were all this hyped, man? Thanks for everyone stopping by, man. Thanks for everyone stopping by. You know what? Like at this point, guys, let's like don't waste. Yo, what's up, Kevin? <laughs> don't waste energy on on the people who don't like this stuff, man. Like let's all just like you know. Let's be in our community, the AEW community, and let's all just be hyped, bro. Let's not waste energy on on the haters, on on the weirdos, you know? Like, like yeah, man. Um, wait, hold on. Where? Pe what are you talking about? <clears throat> Pancake, if you got charged, um, just... Man, that that stinks, man. I hope. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's it's the energy is insane right now, and it there's no better time right now to uh, to be a fan, dude. What's up, guys? What's up, everyone? Pancake, yo, I don't, I don't know what's going on, man. If you want to just, uh, um, I don't know if you asked the question, you can just ask it in the chat. But I'm sorry about that, man. I. I that's that's lame. I'm sorry about YouTube being lame. But yeah, man. After Revolution, I I think Dynasty is gonna be an all timer. Like I, man. Let me just let me just. Uh, oh yeah, I got the new FIFA by the way. It's not even called FIFA, but um, all <laughs> like all the slander that we gave Tony Khan last year, I think was worth it. I think it was worth it, guys. Uh, Pancake, let me get to your question before I forget. Um, just wanted to ask what you think of Pack versus Okada at Dynasty. Baby, <laughs> Pack is back. Rah! <laughs> Thanks for the chat, man. Um, I, I, dude, Pack versus Okada, if that's the Dynasty match, because I thought we were going to get, um, I thought we were going to get Okada versus Kingston at Dynasty, but we're getting that next week. And I don't see Okada losing yet, so... I think he's getting the title, and I think we are getting Pack versus Okada at Dynasty. That's going to be an all-timer. Like, dude, this company's ridiculous. So, yeah, man, thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate it. Shinku. <laughs> yep, WWE fans are definitely sad right now. Or coping. Well, the ones who hate AEW. I just I want to make that clear. The ones who are really weird, you know. <laughs> Enjoy our wrestling, JK. I love tribalism. F the Fed. <laughs> Oz. <laughs> Smooth. I mean, yeah, I mean, all, all, just all the weirdos. Anyway, I don't want to waste energy on them. I don't even want to talk about them. Um, dude, Okada, Osprey, Jay White, uh, Mercedes Monet, um, Kenny Omega will come in sometime soon. <laughs> um, Hey, tranquilo, on Bleacher Report, the WWE page was all talk about AEW, no lies. That's pretty cool. Juan doesn't like the new theme song, wish they would have kept the New Japan song. I, I, as someone who loved the New Japan, well, not loved, but really liked the, the New Japan song, because I know it was like homage to uh, the Criss Cross song. Um, I thought this one has, I think this one has the right energy for an American audience that can, that, you know, likes to chant along and stuff like that. So, does that make sense? Like, I, I, I get it if you don't like it, though. Um, but yeah, dude, Mercedes is back. Um, I said in my video, I say, but after 14 long months of, of speculation, um, she joins AEW, and it felt like at one point she was going back to WWE, but that didn't happen. Um, and what else was I going to say regarding her? Oh, yeah, she was out for almost a year, man. She got injured May last year. So this is her first appearance since then in a wrestling ring. Um, so, yeah. I don't know, man. I get the feeling this is this might age horribly, but I get the feeling because I don't know if you guys saw, but before, yo, Big Rob, what's up? What's up, everyone joining? I appreciate you guys. Um... Shinku, if you watch if you watch my video essay till the end, you'll get the answer to that. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna straight up say it. I don't think <laughs> ever again. But um, he's asking his AEW back. If you, I I'll never say it again. But I think you guys know the answer to that. But um, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. So this might age horribly, but 
because if you guys saw before the show, Stardom and AEW are apparently now, yeah, officially a working relationship. Stardom and AEW. So, <laughs> Shinku, yeah, come right back once you're done. Mogul, Mogul AVI. Yo, what's up? That's a good follow on Twitter. That's a, that's a good person right there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, guys, what was I going to say? Got to play with AC Milan? Dude, I'm a Real Madrid guy. What are you talking about? <laughs> is, um, yeah, so the stardom AEW relationship is apparently happening now. And um, I was bringing that up because I was thinking this. Okay, let me get to the point because I keep forgetting. This might age horribly, but I really do think that Mercedes Monet might end up with the Brian Danielson mentality where she comes in. She's like, you know, I'm going to come in, do th do three years with AEW and then eventually go back to WWE. I said this in my last stream, by the way. And I think she's going to end up, you know, like so long as nothing crazy happens, right? Like barring a brawl out level disaster, which let's hope that let's hope that doesn't happen. I think she'll end up um, liking it enough that she'll stay. And yeah, man, I don't know that that's because Mercedes is a wrestling fan more so than a WWE fan. So yeah, um, choose Man City as my opponent. Okay. So yeah, man. I think Britt Baker returns next week. For those who are talking about it, didn't Deanna tease a a tag team partner? So I think uh, I think she might return next week. The amount of hate for Mercedes is crazy. I mean. Mexico. <laughs> Makoko wants me to play with Mexico. Um, the amount of hate for, Mer for Mercedes is not surprising considering that's what th that's what these fans do. They they turn on these wrestlers when they leave their favorite company and go elsewhere, man. Like, don't get me wrong. I joke about Cody because I think it's funny, you know, when, <laughs> when he gets <laughs> stuff, when he gets... Um, like uh the short end of the stick in wwe but at the end of the day he i'm still a cody fan bro and i'm not gonna i don't hate him i'm not like oh cody sucks he's untalented um you know like but but uh but on the other side that's what they do with these wrestlers a lot of people you know will say oh they were never that good they they suck they're overrated and things like that so i'm not surprised by the hate she's already receiving but um I would imagine that the support she gets is going to is going to outweigh it. Yeah, AEW fans surprisingly general, generally don't hate Cody. Like no nobody really hates Cody. You guys would be surprised. <laughs> and I do think also that maybe one day he'll be back when he's like in his 40s. <laughs> yeah, man, so like like forget about the hate man like like i said i don't even want to waste too much energy on that you know what i mean brandon says he hates most wrestlers that's <laughs> i think i think that's fair <laughs> but um yeah um but what's it called let me see yeah man i really hope that cody just finally gets the belt and he gets what he what he wants out of wwe because the sooner he gets that the sooner a possible comeback to AEW will happen but like i said i don't think he'll come back um i think he'll extend his contract with with uh wwe and then after that contract maybe he'll he'll come back to AEW. we'll see though um <laughs> how much fun <laughs> um Whatever happened to Jade? I mean, ask WWE, man. Anyway, man. Uh, Samoa Joe beat Wardlow. I thought that was pretty obvious. I'm glad they got it out of the way here. But um, I don't know about Wardlow, man. Uh, because Adam Cole's injured too, I think it diminishes the the, the whole like uh, faction. But, I mean, we'll see where he goes from here. I, I guess he'll be... What do you do with him now? He's lost yet another... Wait, has he had a world title match before? Wardlow? I already forgot. Or is this the first one? Um, but yeah, dude. But yeah, we're getting Swerve versus Joe for Shirai Dynasty. And I think this is the moment for Swerve. 
Okay, so this is Wardlow's first uh, shot at the world title. Surprisingly, I thought, for some reason, I thought he already had one. Yo, I thought the game... Can you guys hear me clearly? Let me know. Let me know if I need to lower the, the game volume, because I want you guys to be able to hear me. Am I, uh, am I loud enough? I don't know about Wardlow, man. It's because a lot of people are saying, you know, oh, like poor Wardlow. And, okay, thanks, guys, for letting me know. Um, people are saying, like, poor Wardlow and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, I do. I do feel for him. Because, especially because his big moment, I think MJF really, really took it away from him back at Double or Nothing 22. But I, how do I say this? When you have a roster of Osprey, Swerve, Okada, um, like, you know, Darby, Jay White, when you have guys like Batman, Samoa Joe, Hangman, it's, it's kind of hard for you to stand out, especially when he's, like, so he's good in the ring. He's, I, I think he's serviceable on the mic. He's, he's, like, mostly good, you know what I mean? He, he rarely has a bad promo, if ever. But... It's just hard for him to, you know, to to essentially skip the line, if that makes sense. <laughs> Eighth, what's up, man? <laughs> his his recent promos were actually really good. I'll, I'll give him that. That's the thing. That's the Wardlow dilemma, man. Like, like, who are you gonna? Whose TV time are you gonna? You know, cut for him. In other words. Because a lot of people were already complaining about Jay White, too. You know? Like, that, that he wasn't being booked well enough. And now they he's uh, he's being rehabbed with the whole um, Bang Bang Scissor Gang falling apart, finally. So, yeah, I really do think it's because they, they, missed, they missed the boat badly in 2022 when he should have been in the world title scene. And they put the TNT title on him. He didn't even have a long reign either. The whole thing was really bizarre. So, I really... Man. <laughs> so, yeah, I really don't even know what you would do. I don't know what I would do. Because... He's... Like, he still also feels out of place to me in, in the Undisputed Kingdom. Like, because at least all the other guys, they have a... They have previous... They have previous ties... Yeah, I know my defending is trash, y'all. <laughs> y'all don't gotta tell me. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, oh no, <laughs> there we go. But yeah, guys, um, Wardlow is is a tough one for me. I really, I really wish he could. He he was like a part of a. Ah, here we go. He was a part of a of a fully established tag team because i think he's great i think he should be on the roster i'm not saying cut him like like a lot of other people have said like no i just sent him to wwe i wish he was a part of and i know right now he's part of a faction but like i said he doesn't even really feel like a part of it if he was a part of a really good tag team i think he could thrive and and yeah i just think he needs like a wardlow needs like his fifth reset <laughs> sadly I'm glad I'm not the booker because I wouldn't know what to do. So I hope they figure it out with them. But Samoa Joe retains and uh, Swerve comes out, tries to confront him. Uh, Samoa Joe leaves. And yeah, it's pretty obvious we're getting this match. Um, uh, a lot of something that a lot of people were talking about on social media was uh, what happened to the rankings. And I agree, man. What happened? We got him like two weeks in a row and that was it. Like if they were like... If they were at least going to be monthly, like, he should have at least told us ahead of time. Or I don't know what happened with the rankings, bro. Let's see. What's everyone saying? Wardlow Archer. That wouldn't be bad. Wardlow and ROH as a world champ. I think that'd be really good. Bro, QT came back and the rankings immediately went away. <laughs> That's true. I can't stand QT Marshall. Yeah, we need another update. Or am I going to have to slander Tony Khan again? Like, that's the only thing about 
did he really just abandon them like like legitimately I'm, I'm legitimately wondering did he actually just say oh let's just get rid of them no one will notice as if we actually wouldn't notice <laughs> slander him <laughs> i'm gonna have to slam you see and you guys are and you guys are qt fans and he ruins everything the moment he comes back anyway um Dude, this new Kazuchika Okada gimmick as a heel with the Young Bucks is money, bro. Like, no pun intended. Well, yeah, pun intended, actually. Like, how can you, like... Oh, man. This Okada gimmick. How can you... I would have never came up with this in a million years, but it works so perfectly. Like, him in the suit. He looks like a superstar in the suit. And then when he forced... Uh, was it Alex Marvez? When he forced him to sing happy birthday <laughs> and you know uh, okada speaks some uh pretty good english man so a lot of people who who are worried about that like he you know he can still show his personality of course he's, he doesn't have to cut like like minute long promos but i'm loving this uh direction for okada he comes off like like a star in my opinion and actually uh oz and glory says qt better than daniel garcia and it's not even close bro bro i disagree oz even though that was a super chat but thank you but i highly disagree bro how can you even say that <laughs> um but yeah dude hold on let me skip this because it's loud um let me pause it yeah dude this this uh this okada gimmick it, it moves me it moves me for sure it's incredible and then when he gets in the ring everybody still takes him seriously of course because the aw audience is mostly familiar with Okada, so that uh that trios match was was pretty good. There was a, you know, the crowd by the end of it was going crazy, and you know what? Once again, I know I've already said it a million times, but shout out to the Young Bucks who have proven me wrong. I'm loving their work right now, and um, yeah, man, the Young Bucks are just doing <laughs> arguably the best work of their careers, in my opinion. Like um, <coughs> excuse me, like uh, they're 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 just so they're they're like they're like stupid funny bro you know like like cringe funny like the office funny like uh they're not afraid to look to look dumb and and yeah like that's what i like about them like they're it, it's funny but they're also like you know great wrestlers so once the bell rings um we we all take them seriously especially okada this new elite bro this direction is incredible i'm loving it and yeah, I'm loving the ha-has and the yuck-yucks for once. Because it's not like, it's not during the wrestling, you know? Or like, my problem with MJF's comedy was that it dominated the world title scene. And I think the world title scene should be more serious. <laughs> um, Coco's asking if Sammy G is going to be released soon. That's a, genu that's a genuine question. Because I, I asked the chat the same thing a few streams ago. I was like, guys, how many times has Sammy been suspended? Um, but yeah, man, this Okada, uh, he, he pinned Eddie Kingston, which of course led to the title match next week. And I think that Okada is going to win the belt. The interesting part is that it's just the continental crown. It's not the triple crown. So if Okada wins, does the triple crown just cease to exist? Like I, I'm not being sarcastic here. I'm, I'm legit wondering, do you guys know? <laughs> um, you guys know I, I like Sammy, but yeah, I mean, if he's if he's causing trouble, then they got to do what they got to do. We'll see. I don't know. I'll let them handle it. Yeah, so we got Okada and Eddie Kingston for the Continental Crown, and I'm just, I'm super hyped, man. Shinku, thanks, man, for the soup, the soup chat. Great video, man. I hope that AEW can continue in being consistent and try one up the competition. Let's all enjoy wrestling. Support and believe the product. Here's a small thank you for your elite work. Dude, thank you, man. I appreciate that. That means a lot, actually. You guys don't know how much your words mean. <laughs> your your guys' words actually mean a lot. Especially during these streams, because during these streams, like, we, we, we all actually hang out and stuff. Compared to, you know, just... If you just watch my video essays, I appreciate you guys. But, um... Thanks again, man. Kingston and, and Okada, though. Yeah, we'll see where it goes, right? We'll see where it goes. I mean, like I said, I don't think Okada's going to lose in his, what, his... Is this his, oh, his first singles match, right? 
so no more triple crown. I'm I'm fine with that. Um, but you know, I I I said this um, earlier. I said uh, Okada should hold the belt heading into the C two, and make him the you know the the reigning champion. Dude, that would be so sick, right? Or am I alone in thinking that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm gonna resume this match. But yeah. Um. Yep. Yep. Thanks for the love, everyone. But yeah, man. Like, make Okada the champion and have him hold it until the the Continental Classic in December, or it starts in November, actually. Right? Yeah. The day, the week after. No, the day before Thanksgiving it starts. Um, and yeah, man. Have him in the C2 as the, you know, defending champion and make the magic happen. Dude, this <laughs> this roster is ridiculous. I, I just can't get over it. Like, honestly, I thought the roster was, was stacked in, in 2021. I think this one's even better. I, I don't even know how that's possible. And maybe I'm just saying that. Maybe it's recency bias. But I mean, the only big name we're missing are uh cody and punk and um cody in aw by the end he wasn't considered one of the best but um and then punk is well controversial so how you feel about him is depends on on a lot but uh even then damn i suck don't i miro does need to go though but yeah man like uh <clears throat> how's it better has people that actually want to be there i think that's uh, a huge part of it steven thanks for putting it into words better than i could man but yeah i think that's a huge part of it like andrade is gone he didn't want to be there by the end of it you know even though in the c2 he was playing ball it looked like he you know was enjoying his last days there but yeah it's mostly people who believe in AEW and and the vision which is why I said, guys, you know, I think it's important what Mercedes said in her promo today. She said that the what is she, that she has a, a global vision that can only happen in AEW. And that's because, you know, they work with stardom. They work with New Japan. Um, it's crazy how AEW works with all these companies that have beef with each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, well, I don't even know if you, if you can consider um, AEW and AAA still a still a partnership at this point I don't, I don't think you can but like if it ever was even well it was because there were their belts were on aw tv but you guys know what i mean um but yeah they're like they're they have working relationships with all these rival uh, well companies that are rivals i should say like stardom and tokyo joshi pro do I think TNA and AEW work together again? I don't know. I, I get the vibe that they don't like each other. But who knows with new management? I feel like Scott Demore and, and Tony Khan must have had a falling out. But we'll see. Yo. Yeah, I know Conan was uh was talking mess about the the CMLL AEW partnership for sure. Bro, he's, he's dumb, bro. Like, and and I think he he's obviously he's mad, <laughs> but he's been talking he's been talking bad about AEW for years, and frankly, oh, I'm getting I'm getting pieced up here, guys. And frankly, I don't know why Tony Khan had a was so friendly for to him for so long. I guess about time he went with CMLL, and I know that uh. The only reason why he didn't do it earlier, Tony Khan, was because, well, uh, there were fences to be mended there. I promise, guys, when I play this not on stream, I win. <laughs> the funny thing is, <laughs> someone said Conan is, is the Mexican William Regal. He's not even Mexican, bro. And, I, and I'm saying that because, um, not, like, not as a shot at to you, but, like, a shot to him. Because he, he does kind of, like pretend he's 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 mexican which i always thought was weird yo okay i'm gonna restart this i don't care it's a stream anyway <laughs> we're gonna be here all night anyway because it was a big show <laughs> we're not leaving until i win a game y'all 
Super Mario Strikers is better. It is. I'm not even going to argue with that. <laughs> yeah, he's not. Me I think he's Puerto Rican. I think. Can someone? Um, can someone correct me if I'm wrong? I don't want to spread misinformation. But he's not Mexican. He's Cuban. Okay, there we go. Yeah, he's Cuban. He's not Mexican. And uh, like I said, <laughs> I'm glad that um, I think it was uh, Eighth that brought it up. Like I said, it wasn't a shot at you, dude. It was a shot at him. <laughs> cause, yeah. I remember for the longest time, I did think he was a... Uh, he was a... Uh, Mexican though. <laughs> yeah, his gimmick is being Mexican. <laughs> um, where's Tranquilo from? From. Just kidding. Most of the chat knows where I'm from. Oh. Oh, <laughs> sorry, y'all. He's the Cuban William Regal. Then. I mean, they're both double agents, so, so um, I don't, I don't disagree with you. But yeah, man, that Stardom AEW partnership, Forbidden Door this year is gonna be crazy, isn't it? Oh, Pierre, now, now you're, now you're talking about my people for sure. He said his favorite Mexican wrestler, Pac, was on Dynamite tonight. Yep, Pac is Mexican for those of y'all that don't know. Pac is my favorite luchador. <laughs> yeah, man, like Forbidden Door is going to go sick. And a, a lot of people were worried, like, because, you know, such all the big names from New Japan had signed with AEW. But, like, you know, you see it now, like... All the other promotions are gonna are gonna you know it's almost gonna be like the original all in pre AEW, you know, where it's all hands on deck. Um and it's gonna be pretty cool, man. Like I imagine CMLL, stardom now, um, of course, New Japan. Cause I mean say what you will about New Japan's booking right now, they still have Shingo, they still have um Hiromu, they still have um Zack Saber Jr. Um, Naito, they have, uh, all the, you know, they have, like, Shooter, um, Yota Tsuji, they have all those guys, bro, so, you know what I mean? So, it could still be a good show, despite the New Japan booking, you know, because uh, that's what Forbidden Door is, you know, like, both companies' bookings, uh, go out the door, and it's just, you know, it's, it's a bunch of dream matches, so. So yeah, man, I think uh, the scapegoats, I forgot about Jack Perry. Um, or I sh should I say a House of Torture member, Jack Perry. AWNWA. <laughs> what does NWA have to offer in 2024, bro? Like, <laughs> I'm legitimately asking to <laughs> because I don't follow them. Isn't EC3 their world champion? I don't want that on Forbidden Door. Okay, I'm defending better for sure this game. Oh, spoke too soon. Let me see. Hope this super chat works. Yep, I got it. Pancake, appreciate you. Remember when AEW started and they were partnered with OWE? And we had the Shima versus Omega match and nothing else. Dude, yes, thank you for reminding me of that. That, um... When, when AEW, you know, was first... When they first came to be, that was a huge part of uh, of my excitement. You know that that working relationship with OWE, and then they went uh, defunct, right? Like they they closed down. Like oh no, pretty pretty early on in in AEW's lifetime, which is why we never saw them again. <clears throat> AEW NXT, yeah, I remember that. That was actually, I remember it, it was pretty, um, I was excited for that. Do you guys remember when AEW and New Japan had beef as well? Like, that's crazy, right? 
so many things you know AEW has had like so many like what ifs and and all these things like when AEW first started and and new japan hated them which is why they didn't work together until like 2021 it took the pandemic for both companies to be like okay let's let's work together it benefits both of us i appreciate you guys coming out to hang out appreciate all the love um what haven't i talked about on the show remind me remind me we talked about okada mercedes will osprey's promo dude bruv I, I i touched on it briefly in the beginning but man like i i feel like a lot of people are are surprised by how good of a promo will osprey is like they all knew he was you know one of the best wrestlers in the world but i don't think a lot of people expected him to be such a good promo too and they should have known if they watched AEW, his promo before he faced jericho um at wembley was pretty damn good oh what the hell Osprey is the one, bro. He's the he's the mega baby face that um AEW has been looking for, and he's only thirty. Isn't that crazy? He's only thirty, bro. So I think he turns thirty one this year, but regardless, that's still young. <laughs> yeah, Osprey is for sure invited to the carne asada. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people call him that, like he's their Cody, but younger. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that's a fair comparison. Um, but dude, he's he's the one, bro. Like, yeah, he came in white hot, and everybody's ready for him to be the, like, the champion. You know, yeah, kind of like Cody in WWE. Like, so I think that is a a fair comparison. Like, you know, you come in with a bunch of fanfare, everybody loves you right away, and you know they want to see you win the big one right away as well. Um, but yeah, man, this promo was was great, and you know, building up to his match with uh, Danielson, which, dude, I don't even know at this point. <laughs> like, Will Osprey is gonna be the wrestler of the year, like, or it's gonna be. So I call, I saw someone call this um, this match the battle for wrestler of the year, Danielson versus Osprey. But I think Osprey has a, a, a the the bigger case this year. But what? Like it doesn't even matter. What we're who, the ones who win are the fans. I know that's cliche, but like we're we're all really gonna win here. And Osprey is just like the all around superstar. It's he's he's good at everything, man. JY two will we'll we'll talk about him in a bit, but um, <laughs> yeah, well Osprey is. Well, Osprey's on another level, though. Like, I actually... I'm not gonna lie, guys. I didn't expect him for, for him to be this over. Like, I knew the fans were gonna love him. But I didn't think he was gonna be, like... Like, one of the most over on the roster right off the bat. But maybe that's just me being naive or dumb or... But yeah. It, it, it caught me off guard. But it's a... It's a like I said already... Him and Swerve is gonna be a, a huge match. For sure. Probably at Wembley this year. Do you have do you have Osprey win it this year though? Or do you give Swerve a longer reign? What do you do? That's the dilemma. It's a good problem to have. A very good problem to have. But I'm glad I'm not booking. <laughs> Swerve long reign. Someone says Osprey wins. I like how it's so split too. Like, because I love both guys, man. And they're both in their moment. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> um, Pancake says get back the title. I'm not against that either. Pancake, I think you would like my... Uh, you would get along with my good friend, Marco, who's the biggest Pac fan I've ever met. <laughs> I think you guys need a fight to see who's the biggest Pac fan. <laughs> Ah, man. So Tony's hiring writers now? Yeah. Swerve's reign will be about six months by Wembley. I think that's pretty good for his first reign because I don't think he'll... I think he'll be a champion again, too. But, um, like I said, the, lo the line to be world champion is long. And I think we should get into the next match, which um, featured... Let me pause it. 
featured, in my opinion, two future AEW World Champions, Jay White versus Darby Allin. Um, obviously, this match, <laughs> Tony Khan <laughs> saw all the noise about Jay White and how he, um, you know, he shouldn't be in this Bang Bang Scissor Gang thing. And honestly, I agreed. I, I thought it overstated its welcome. I thought it should have ended at Revolution. I thought it was going to end at Revolution. And so, yeah, man, uh, obviously this was to rehab Jay White. He got the big win. They got, um, they had a pretty good match. Darby's always hurting his back. <laughs> he did the coffin drop off the, off the, uh, the top rope to the, uh, to the apron. Cause Jay White moved out of the way. And yeah, this was a good match, man. Um, what's it called? So Jay White got the win. They, uh, Bullet Club Gold was about to attack Darby, but then the Acclaimed and um, and Billy Gunn came out. And then finally, Bullet Club Gold turned on them. The Bang Bang Scissor Gang is finally over. <laughs> and, um, yeah, like, Jay White looked like a beast. And then they did right off Darby for Mount Everest. They attacked him. So if Darby comes back, he'll have immediate beef with, uh, you know, Jay White again, which is a good program. Um, Darby, once again, please don't die, man. Please come back in one piece. Please, Darby. <laughs> I have full faith in in Darby to do this. Like I said, um, we talked about it, uh, I think, a couple of streams ago, right? Where um, the mountain climbing experts were impressed by Darby's ability. And Darby has already climbed, you know, a few mountains um, in preparation for Mount Everest. So, so yeah, I hope... I hope this is, uh, yeah, pray for Darby, y'all. <laughs> but, um, um, cause yeah, I need Darby to come back and finish his story, which would be, uh, eventually winning the AEW world title and with Sting either helping him to win it, like, uh, like who, like Stone Cold helped Mankind, like Goldberg helped Eddie Guerrero, um, something like that, or, you know, just to come out and celebrate with him at the very least, so... Yeah, and Darby's going to plant that uh, AEW flag in Mount Everest for sure. Pancake, before I sleep, I just want to say... This is a super chat from Pancake, sorry. <laughs> before I sleep, I just want to say, Darby will be world champ, but he has to be MJ for it somehow with the headlock takeover. And it'll be perfect. Pancake, yes, thank you, man. Thank you for bringing that up. I agree with you. <laughs> I mean, preferably, right? But if it's not MJ, if he beats for the world title... I'd still be okay with it. But yeah, he needs to get that redemption, though. He needs to be MJF in a big match at the very least, even if it's non-world title. Even if it's just a regular feud. In route... Now, I would also accept this. In route to Darby winning the world title in 2025, let's say, he beats MJF with the headlock takeover one day. You know what I mean? So, yeah, thanks for that, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for the super chats. But yeah, plant that AEW flag in Mount Everest, Darby, and come back and win the world title, bro. <laughs> so yeah man um but jay white was uh rehabbed here i think he looked good and i look forward to seeing the bang bang gang doing their own thing now like um yeah i'm over max caster too guys he's he's been acting a fool on on social media and um i wish uh anthony bowens i saw someone uh fantasy book anthony bowens in um Ooh, in Bullet Club Gold, and I would I would actually love that. I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, they need to unify the the six man belts though. There's no reason for there to be a ROH version and an AEW version. Even if it's a work with Max, and I do think it is a work, like. Like, trust me, I, I I believe it's a work. Even if it is, it still makes them look dumb and annoying. And, and I just don't... I think it's dumb to make... Like, I know he's going for the meta heel where he really makes you hate, hate him. Like, people are going to say, oh, it's working then. Well, there's ways to get heat without being, you know, a straight up dummy is all I'll say. But... Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, bullet Club Gold. All that matters is that Jay White and the guns are out of there. Because the guns are great as well. Oh, man. 
I cannot play and, and stream this one at the same time, y'all. <laughs> Jay says he doesn't have Twitter. That's that's good, actually. Stay off of Twitter. <laughs> it's way too toxic, especially to talk about AEW. There's a lot of um, haters on there. That's why I like, you know, coming out here to stream after shows. Because it's fans that actually watch the show and even if we don't all agree even if we criticize something we we do it in good faith hearing guns praise still is crazy because folks were crapping on them two years ago i was one of them i was one of them i was i was slandering them left and right i thought why are they signed they shouldn't be an aw but nope they proved me wrong man 100 percent wrong and I am so happy to admit that. Jericho needs time off. I agree. I don't... Bro, the fact that they're... You know, Jericho is coming out to no pops. Actually, he got booed um, when they did the backstage segment to announce Hook versus Jericho next week. Um, he literally got like such loud boos. It was crazy. And... Oh... Oh, man. Yeah. Even if we disagree, we just agree to disagree. Yeah, I agree that many men entrance, that's literally the moment the, the guns won me over. Literally. That was the moment, like no other moment. They The guns actually won the world title, the world ta the tag team titles um, in my hometown. I was at that show in El Paso. So it's so funny. Like, I was so mad. And then just a few weeks later, they won me over. But, um... Yeah, Daniel. I'm glad you're here, man. Even though you're a little bit behind on the stream, that's okay. That's okay, man. You're, you're not going to hear this until, like, 40 minutes later. <laughs> Se la perdió. <laughs> Kevin, for real, bro. <laughs> man, I could have won the game, yo. I, I still have a second leg to play, though. Second leg. Um... But yeah, man, uh, what's it called? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Was I talking about Jericho, right? He's getting booed, man. He's coming out to uh, the Lionheart entrance with no, with no pop. No pop, exactly. Is that what Roman said, by the way? Is FC24 worth buying? It's 15 bucks right now. If, you, there, if there was ever a time to buy it, buy it now. Unless you already have, if you already own last year's FIFA, then then don't buy it, because it's the same thing. But it is fifteen bucks right now, so if I ever recommended it, it would be right now. Exactly, no pop. Yeah, I, Jericho, guys. I'm not even like you guys already know that I don't like him. But look, I'm trying to. I'm looking at this objectively. He's getting no reactions. He's getting booed hardcore. He really needs uh a time away it's not gonna win me over but it might win others over again but he needs to uh he needs he needs a long break <laughs> and i'm like i said i'm trying to be as objective as i can here the fact that he's one of the highest paid guys or if not the highest paid um it's it's uh it's embarrassing but yeah he needs to go away for a while His Fozzie tour flopped and he's flopping in the ring. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. I was over Jericho in 2021, bro. So imagine how I feel now. I was... So have I told you guys this story? I was at All Out 2021. And the merch lines were, were so long that I decided to go buy merch during the Jericho match because everybody was invested in that one. It was Jericho versus MJF. And I said, oh, it's a Jericho match. I'm going to go buy merch. So I was over him way back then. <laughs> Imagine how I feel now. But yeah, man. It, um, Hook, I, I would imagine he's going to put over Hook. If not, that would be horrendous booking. Oh, what am I doing? No. Let's start this again, y'all. The match just started anyway. Y'all see how, how big of a sore loser I am? I have to restart.
Wait, what did Max say? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, caster? He's just being dumb, bro. I'm sure if you, uh... I'm not even gonna say this to be mean or anything, but, um, just because there's... He's been saying a lot of dumb stuff, but... I'm sure if you Google it, I think it comes up. I think. I could be wrong, but... Yeah, man. So I hope he doesn't beat Hook, because that would be... That'd be a horrible decision. Yo. Shinku, what did Max Caster do asking for Coco? Um. He said he got hacked. <laughs> he just, he just, um, like, I, I can't even lie. <laughs> I don't even remember exactly what it is, but, um, he's, uh, he's gaining heat, like, by, uh, by trying to piss off people, like, in the wrong ways. I don't know, it's hard, to, it's hard to explain, guys, like, because I, I wish I, I actually remembered. He, no, he said, so, no, he said he got hacked, but then he's like, but I agree with my hacker. So he obviously didn't get hacked. He was being dumb. <laughs> he said, sorry, guys, I got hacked. The thing is, I agree with everything the hacker said. So he, you know, <laughs> like, come on now. Anyway, it isn't, it isn't that serious. It's just like, bro, like, just stop. Like, you're annoying. Like, it's nothing serious, but it, it's also, like, dumb. I, I think you guys are, like, uh, the ones who want to know, I think you guys, I guess I blew it out of pro pro proportion. Um, but yeah, it like, it wasn't anything, like, too too bad like that so yeah i'm sorry if i made it seem like it was like it's it's just more like that like go away bro like like you're lame <laughs> yeah it's just cringe it's nothing like crazy but but i assume well no i was gonna say i assume he's going heal but no like after today's episode they were clearly the baby faces bro Hook in BCC. I don't think they're gonna add anyone, anyone else. Maybe Seamus. If they add anyone, it'll probably be Seamus. Oh, that's one. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, the whole shouts to Benjamin thing. He said we don't want him. We don't want him in AEW or something like that. And then um, a few wrestlers went after him after Max, including Keith Lee. But I don't know if that was in storyline or not. I couldn't tell. Corey, hey Trank, hope you're taking care of yourself. Just wanted to ask a fun question. What's your favorite trilogy match series? Mine is Joe Punk. It's what solidified my love of wrestling. Bro, that was such a good trilogy. I made a whole video about it last year. <laughs> but uh, thanks for the super chat, man. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for the love thing. And that's a good question. Um, my favorite trilogy of all time? Right off the bat, my mind went to Okada and Omega, but I know that was a quadrilogy. So does that count? Um, if not, let me give you an actual trilogy of matches. I'm trying to think, 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 think. Oh, thank you, man. I'm glad you enjoyed the video on the trilogy. I don't know if you had seen it or not, but um. Yeah, because right now at the top of my head, Okada, Omega. But like I said, that's four matches. So, um, FTR Briscoes was really good, for sure. Um, finally. Rock versus Austin. Um, I don't like the the first one that much, but the the second, the, the third and the second and the third. I like those. Um, match series in there for more wiggle room. Um, so yeah, Corey, to answer your question, I'm trying to give you multiple though, because Okada, Omega's for sure one of them. Um, I, I, I would have to say, yeah, Punk, Punk and Joe is also one of them too. Those, those first three matches in, um, in Ring of Honor were classic. And then, oh, right when I score, bro, come on. <laughs> Shinku, thanks for the super chat, man. Everyone who can do a super chat, let's try and fund Tranquilo Club's trip to London for all in. <laughs> nah, man, don't do that, y'all. I appreciate you guys, though, but 
<laughs> I'm not going to London anytime soon. I kind of have a um, a fear of uh, flying overseas. I don't know why. I don't know if you guys ever watched Lost. That's not the reason why, but that's that's one that's one reason why now. <laughs> Trank is playing like Man United. That's the worst insult anyone has ever given me, but I appreciate it. <laughs> but thanks, guys. Thanks for all the love, man. I appreciate it. You guys are too nice to to me when I just literally talk about wrestling while playing random video games. 4, 8, 15, 16, 20, 30, 42. My man, David. My man, David, is a lost, a huge lost fan if he knows those numbers off the top of his head. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> when is the merch coming out? You know what? I don't know. That's a good question, though. That's a good question. I'm still stuck on that trilogy of matches question, because, because damn, we need another Roblox stream probably this Saturday. <laughs> Do I think All In sells well? Hell yeah, with Osprey, with with Monet, and with Okada. Hopefully, a healthy Omega. Yeah, man. Steven, thanks, man. I appreciate you. Drop stickers for merch. That would actually be sick. I don't know about you guys, but I, I like um, stickers, just putting them on random stuff in my room. Let me see. I'm going to pause it, answer some of your guys' questions here. Corey says, especially as I'm a relatively new wrestling fan, so finding Joe Punk even before their AEW matches felt super special. And when I was like, okay, wrestling is officially something I can call a love. Dude, yes. Wrestling, when it's good, there's nothing better, man. <laughs> Honestly, like, wrestling at its best can be up there with, like, the best movie or the best show I've ever seen. And I mean that. But, um, I'm trying to think recently. Because, yeah, like, if I, if I think about my recent fandom, the best, the best series of matches I've ever seen for sure are Okada and Omega. But, um... I'm trying to think you know, of an American series. I guess John Cena and AJ Styles had pretty good matches. I don't know if you would enjoy those. Um, my favorite match they had was uh, their second one. I think it happened at SummerSlam. I loved that one. FTR and the Briscoes 2 is really good. So yeah, I, I would I would say those. All In is at 40,000 tickets sold, yeah. Swerve versus Hangman, yes. Yes, absolutely. Actually, thanks guys for reminding me. FTR Briscoe, Swerve versus Hangman. <laughs> Knack versus Marco Stunts. <laughs> Angle versus Michaels. Um, I don't know if I've told you guys this, but that um, the first match that Kurt Angle and Shawn Michaels had at WrestleMania 21... I think is the best WWE my the best WWE match I've ever seen. It's for sure I think my favorite WWE match ever. Yeah, Corey, I think you'll enjoy him cuz AJ Styles when he came into WWE, he was he went in there with a chip on his shoulder looking to prove a point and I think that's why those matches were so damn good. So um I recommend them. You know what's a pretty good trilogy? Well, no, 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 not the last bench. The last bench wasn't good. I was actually going to recommend Jamie Hayter, Tony Storm. Because those matches were always good. But uh, the third match actually wasn't that good. It was just like a squash match because Jamie was injured. Speaking of Jamie, I think she'll be back pretty soon, right? Bret Hart matches. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, Bret, Bret Hart is... Is incredible. I think it's hard to to come up with like um, a trilogy of matches because I feel like like uh, for some reason a lot of trilogies have one match that wasn't that good. You know, unfortunately. Yeah, that Willow Riho main event was fantastic, guys. Like, 
man, they were going at it. And it was super, it was super crazy to see uh, Mercedes and Riho meet right before the main event. I was like, man, it, it felt like, you know, that felt like a legit, like, multiverse moment. I was like, I never thought I would see that. Um, but yeah, the main event was sick. It was hard hitting. It was crazy. And um, Willow got the win over, over Riho, which, which is pretty, like, interesting. Because uh, didn't Riho beat Statlander? Was that just last week? Yeah, it was, huh? So it, it, it's a pretty interesting dynamic that'll happen there. Triple H fears Riho, man. Yo! Yeah, Swerve and Hangman have no bad matches for sure. Yo, did that guy injure my player, bro? Let me see. No, he's not injured. Yeah, Mercedes' first interaction was with the first AEW Women's Champion, which was Riho. And then... I'm just really glad they, they did have Mercedes come out to end the show. Like, to make the save for Willow. Because if not, that crowd would have been, like, so disappointed. Because they were chanting uh, CEO pretty loud, like, um, after... Uh, even before Julia came out. But especially afterwards. But yeah, man, what an episode of Dynamite. Did I, did I get to everything? I feel like I missed something. Oh, and then on Collision, we have um, Kyle O'Reilly's return to in-ring competition. Which is a huge deal. He hasn't wrestled in almost two years. And man, I think Kyle is like one of the most underrated uh, wrestlers. I don't think he's underrated per se, but um, I think people forget how good he is. Like he can, he can put on a clinic with, you know, with... Like the best wrestlers in the world. Yeah, booking book ending the show is I think it's something that AEW rarely does, but um when they do when they do it, I think it's it's really cool. Yo, Rumor is is going to ROH to face Athena. I think Athena drops about then. Yeah, I saw that. Paige Van Zant is still on the roster. Yeah, that's that's dumb. She's obviously never coming back. I mean, I don't know that for sure, right? But like it feels that way. It feels that way for sure. Because a lot of people will say, oh, she's injured. Like, even before she got injured, she, she like, showed no signs of coming back. Just waiting out the contract? Probably. Did you guys see the Miro and, uh, <laughs> CJ Perry news? I don't want, I don't want to, like, touch too much on it, but... Like, isn't it ironic considering all the angles he ran with his wife in wrestling? Like, like, bro. It's like the least shocking news ever. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. But yeah, apparently Miro moved back to, uh, how do you say it, Bulgaria? Oh, so yeah, apparently that's yet another reason why we're not going to see Miro soon. Bro, Miro stinks. Like Miro is legit one. Like remember what we were saying about, um, um, Wardlow earlier. I was like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get rid of him. I think he still holds value. I don't think Miro holds value in 2024. I'm sorry. Not for AEW. Maybe for another company. But not AEW. That arcade fight with best friends was cool. I remember that one. 
excuse me. Um, I saw someone suggest that big business should be a yearly thing now. Um, I don't know what that means. Like, just like, I don't know if they meant like just a, a yearly um, episode in, in Boston, I guess, now that you have a uh, Mercedes on the roster. But um, yeah, I really don't know. But yeah, it was cool to have like a, um, a big episode of Dynamite that just felt, yeah, man, just felt massive. Yeah, but um, I do feel like they cut down on on themed episodes last year, didn't they? I feel like in um, in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two we had a lot, and I know some people were like, "Oh, they're doing too many," but uh, no, nah, I don't think they were ever doing too many. I thought it was pretty cool to get themed episodes. Did we get? We didn't get Winter is Coming last year, did we? Because we had the C two, which honestly I prefer the C two at this point. Like it's it's a fair trade off. But I think we should. We, they could still do Winter is Coming. Did we have Winter is Coming, guys? Can you guys remind me? I have a horrible memory. Yeah, I miss Big Bill. I wonder when him and uh, Ricky Starks are going to come back. Remember, the, remember all the fake news about Ricky Starks? That his contract had already expired? Like, I'm not doubting that he might go to WWE, but his contract, he's still under contract. We had winners coming last year, did we? I don't even remember. Was it part of the C2? Like, was it just C2 matches? A C2 for the tag titles? I don't think so, but they they should really build the women's division up for a C2 next year for the women. I think the I think they should just do um like World Tag League like New Japan does. Ah. It was part of the C2. I had a feeling. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Brody King versus Andrade. Yeah, I remember now. It was part of the C2. Yo. Blood and Guts return? Yes. I would imagine. Sheamus and BCC. Yep. I forgot that we still have Grand Slam for sure. Um, I hope they run it from that... Uh, What's it called? The stadium next to Arthur Ashe. Because they're doing Arthur Ashe. Oh, they're doing Forbidden Door at Arthur Ashe this year, aren't they? Dude, that's gonna be crazy. I think they'll have I think they'll pull a bigger crowd than uh than they did the first year for Grand Slam at Arthur Ashe. Louis Armstrong, yeah, I hope they do uh I hope they do Grand Slam there if they do uh Forbidden Door. Well no yeah, that's already confirmed, right? Forbidden Door at Arthur Ashe, so There we go, baby. Baby. Yo, Travis Wilson, you didn't have a question or anything, man? Thank you for the super chat, though. <laughs> I just noticed. I appreciate it. My bad that I barely saw it. But let me know. If you have a question or anything, like, submit it, man. I'll, I'll, I'll answer it. Kevin, thanks, man. Thanks for watching the new video. Yeah, guys, after the stream, if you haven't seen the new video, say, please check it out. Um, it was more so my thoughts on um, the importance of Mercedes joining and the importance of the big three signings this year. Because it was obviously recorded before her debut. So, Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah oh, man
what is life grand slam will sell out this year if they do it at that uh smaller stadium yeah they, they will i think they will double or nothing needs to get out of vegas man vegas doesn't deserve a pay-per-view anymore Yeah, I think the women's C2 can be next year. Like in the... Near the summer? Oh, we're going to penalties, guys. I think. Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> <coughs> I'm not good at these. I just bought this game. Double or nothing in Atlantic City would be sick. Modric, Rodrigo, Alaba, Vinny Jr., Bellingham. All right, let's go. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, we need an El Paso uh, pay-per-view. Double or nothing in New Orleans. That's actually that actually be cool. Oh man. What if Tony Khan announces AEW Dynamite joined the club in El Paso? That'd be cool. Yeah, I think Tony Khan's doing double or nothing at Vegas, like, no matter what. He likes his traditions for whatever reason. Double or nothing. That's in Portland, right, Kevin? It would confirm that, that I'm signed. Man. Well, it's okay, guys. You guys joined me on this journey. <laughs> um, <laughs> it hurts to lose that way. Nah, Valverde, it's not his fault. It's my fault. I was controlling the player. <laughs> but anyways, guys. Yeah, man. Um, hold on. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna break my controller. Like how Shinku said. Double or nothing. Double or nothing in Alaska would be a better crowd than Vegas. Imagine. <laughs> Bro, uh, it's part. It's the part of the stream where the where the chat roasts me for not ever being able to win a game. I'm just going to play Roblox on, on Saturday because it's hard to lose in Roblox for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, uh, what's it called? Let me see. What's what, what's the chat up to, guys? Double or nothing in Spain? Can you imagine? Full gear in LA was amazing. I agree. The crowd was awesome. Double or nothing in Vietnam so I can go there. Says screwed melodies. Hey, man, I hope you one day... Get to go to a show. Shinku says, L, my L's in FIFA is a sacrifice for W's in AEW. <laughs> Smooth says, Rampage good. I can't wait to check it out, man. AEW should come to India. I agree, man. They should go to every you know country to expand their brand. And you guys deserve to see some good shows as well. A pay-per-view in Puerto Rico, perhaps? I hope so. Mexico, of course, Shinku. Shinku, I hope you got your answer too about um if AEW is back when you saw the video. 
man, how wild. How wild. What a wild show. And we still got Rampage and Collision, so... And the next week's show looks insane, too. <laughs> so, yeah, guys. AJ Styles and AEW. I, I still would... Yeah, I, I would still like to see AJ and AEW, honestly. <laughs> Alright, cool, Shinku. But yeah, guys. Um, Any final... Final questions before I call it a night here. It's insane, right? When is the second channel launching, dude? I know, I know that's something I've been telling you guys um, for like a long time now, but I don't know at this point. Oh man, I would love to launch it like like yesterday, but <laughs> um, I need to I need to work on that for sure. Hmm. I need a Trank Twilight Zone analysis. Oh, one day you'll get it. Oppenheimer Deep Dive. <laughs> when is the IWC slander bit dropping? Fraud. <laughs> smooth. You got to wait on that one. Every time you slander me, Smooth, the, it gets delayed one month. <laughs> What's my favorite uh, Rouge match uh, versus Brian Danielson in El Paso? I was there for it to watch it. That's for sure my favorite. Um... Let's see. <clears throat> Kevin asked who which starter wrestlers I would like to see in AEW. Um Thecla for sure. She's she's talked about wanting to to be there, right? Um, obviously, Azumi, but she was there um tonight, right? For what was was it ROH? And then um, obviously Mayu Watani, I think would be pretty sick. Mucha Lucha or Nacho Libre? Oh, that's a hard one. Nacho Libre. <laughs> Cody taught Trank how to lie. <laughs> Second channel is supposed to have Oppenheimer, Twilight Zone, and Iron Claw reviews. Yep. Remember the WWE April Fool's video. <laughs> True, I keep forgetting about that. That's coming up, huh? <laughs> Mina Shirokawa. Okay, yeah, she was there for sure. Was she the only one? I thought someone else was there. I thought it was Zumi. Could have sworn I saw that. I'm I'm spreading false info then. Thoughts on the real four pillars of all Japan? Legendary. I remember I caught up um I only learned about them through YouTube. I wish I could remember the channel. <laughs> w misinformation. I'm clickbait. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, okay, Azumi's gonna be in Chicago. You mean AZM? <laughs> like a Mercedes last year? <laughs> Miro, if we're trading Miro for Sheamus, who are we trading Black and Buddy for? Um, AJ Styles. Nah, he's too, he's too old. Why? Uh, I, I, I say he's too old, right? Um, Gunther. Give me Walter every day, every day of the week. Give him, give him Malachi, Miro. Who else? <laughs> and give us Walter. Okay, because if not Walter, I was actually going to say um, <coughs> Bianca Belair. Because I, uh, I think she'd be a great... I would, I would invest more in the women's division right now than the men's, honestly. 
But that's just me. Because I think the men's division is good to go. Trade Miro for Io Shirai. I'd be down for that, obviously. Trade Miro for anyone, bro. Just get him out of here. Wardlow lost, so I'm curious what happens. Did you talk about that in the start of the stream? Yep, I did. We talked about Wardlow for a good amount of time. Or Kyrie, yep. Trade Miro for a bag of chips. I would do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> For my, even for my least favorite bag of chips. <laughs> no, you're good, Travis. You're good, you're good. You were just asking, man. Um, yeah, I would trade Miro for, like, a lot of people on the roster, honestly. But, um, yeah, guys, I hope I got into everything that you guys wanted to talk about. If you haven't seen my uh, video essay... Go ahead and check it out. Give it a like. Share it if you can. Um, I don't know where you would share it. Send it to like your... Send it to uh, people. Send it to your friend that you haven't talked to in years. Like just without any context. Send it to your... Uh, send it to your boss if you work. Send it to your doctor if you have their number. Or <laughs> send it to... Send it to just the most random people. Send my video to the most random number you have. <laughs> I'm just playing y'all, but do, yeah, d give it a like and, and check it out if you haven't already, but, um, but yeah, man, we got, we got some, uh, <laughs> Shinku says, I'll send it to my wife. Yeah, there you go, Shinku. <laughs> Browsing, sending it, he says he's sending it to his mom. Yeah, send, send my video to the most random people. When is the Mercedes video, Trank? It's already up, man. It went up right when Dynamite ended. Um... Yeah, check it out. It's it's there. But I appreciate you guys, and I hope you guys um, enjoyed the stream. And um, yeah, man, like I said, I'm never gonna say I'm never gonna say that AEW is um, you guys know the term. In other words, when you guys ask me, are they back? I'm never gonna say it again. But the answer is clear, man. The answer is clear. <laughs> but yeah, guys, um, I hope to to chill with you guys after a collision. I appreciate you guys coming through. I hope uh, you guys had fun and um, enjoy the rest of your week, man. And we have a lot to catch up to over the next couple of shows. A lot, because a lot is happening in AEW right now. So we'll talk about it then. But you guys have a good night or a good morning, depending where you're at in the world. And see you guys later. Peace.